Hey everybody, what is going on? We're about ready to start some Algebra 2. You guys are going to be pretty impressed with what you can do in this class. Algebra 2 is so exciting. Maybe you loved Algebra 1. Well, maybe you didn't, but either way, you want to be here, you want to do some math, you want to uh, go to college, here you go. We are going to dive into Algebra 2, the first of the upper level math classes. So I really, really am proud of you for wanting to do this class, and um, it's going to be good. There's, you're going to learn some good stuff that you're going to need for the future. So that being said, we are going to start with something really nice and easy, like real numbers. Woohoo! Real, not fake, real. All right, so real numbers indicated by a capital R. So, of course, uh, look for this packet. This is your unit one packet of notes that you should already have. Um, real numbers, they consist of the following sets of numbers, starting with irrational, rational. We'll go ahead and uh, talk about those. So I would definitely, if you have some kind of highlighter, um, I'll be highlighting some stuff. Um, you've got to know these definitions, okay? I know they're already written out here for you, but... Um, gotta know them. So, it would be good to have a highlighter. Obviously not required, but it would be good. Alright, um, real numbers. They are all the numbers that you know right now. They are contained in the real number system. Okay. Um, it is not the only type of system, which is kind of cool. What you're going to learn is a new type of number um, in this class. Not until a few, few more units <coughs> in the middle of the class, but... Um, the, we know we uh, some of the real numbers are irrational, so these are numbers that are in decimal form and they do not repeat. A common example is pi in non-perfect squares, so we're actually going to jump down and start filling this in. The Maybe you remember this, you should have gone over some of this before, but as review, you probably forgot some stuff. Irrational is represented by a capital I. And the example was pi, the first one, because how, how do I know that that's an irrational number? Well, you type in pi into the calculator and you get um, this crazy decimal, right? So, um, by the way, uh, make sure you get one of these calculators from the library um, or you can buy your own. It will come in uh, handy for college, so that way you already have your own. But see, I get some crazy number that uh, does not repeat and keeps on going. Any of those type of numbers that you get, those are irrational numbers, okay? Um, so there are a few others. Um, most of them are going to contain a symbol, a square root symbol. For example, square root of, and then we pick non-perfect squares, like 5. 5 is a non-perfect square. You do square root of 5, second square root 5, and you get 2.236 of 6, 7, 9, 7, 7, no pattern. It just keeps on going, so yeah. And then you can just pick, you know, any other um, any other number really to go under that square root, and you're pretty good if you uh, stick with the non-perfect square under a square root. Okay. Um, all right. But always check it in the calculator just to be sure. Not a bad idea. All right. Then we have rational. So irrational. I call those the crazies. Okay. They're the crazies. When you put them in the calculator, you get something crazy, okay? But rationals, you don't. You get something pretty predictable or something that has definition to it. So these numbers either terminate. Terminate means I terminate you. You stop. <laughs> or you put an end to it. So uh, this one has a weird symbol. It's Q. I don't know why. It just is. <laughs> There's a lot of things in the math world. We don't know why, but they just are that way. Um, rational numbers, da 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 Oh, examples of rational numbers. I forgot where I was at. All right. Look, for example, 0 0.31, we can stop and say, all right, if I just end it right there, 0 0.31, it has, it's terminated. It has a stopping point. So as long as it has a stopping point, it's rational. Um, and then another uh, common way it, to think of rationals is fraction. Rational, um, I remember being taught fractional. It's, I think it's a made-up word. But fractional rhymes with rational, so that's a way to remember it. Just a way to remember it. You don't have to use it that way. All right, 
So any type of fraction like 5 over 8. Let's try that. If I type 5 over 8 in the calculator, I get 0.625, and then it stops. So it stops. It has three digits, and then it stops. So we're good, as long as it stops. Okay, um, let's think of another one. Oh, how about this? We said it takes repeating numbers, so 0 0.2 with a repeat bar over it. Remember, that's how you indicate that a number goes on forever, um, is put a little bar over the number that repeats. Um, and also, this does include negatives. Negative 7 over 11, that would be a rational number. Then the subsets of them are, we'll start with integers, good old integers. Um, it doesn't have a Z, but the symbol is a Z. <laughs> so integers. And then integers, of course, are numbers on a number line, like 7, negative radical 100. What? That was random. Yeah, I know. Wanted to point this out. Sometimes it's like, oh, it's a radical. That means it's irrational. No, this is a perfect square. So since it's perfect, what number times itself will equal this number? And it is 10. Correct. The radical of 100 is 10. So the negative will stay. So if we actually simplify this, that's negative 10. And negative 10 is on the number line. So sometimes they try to trick you. They disguise the number, and then you have to simplify it. Uh, yeah, that's going to happen like this. Let's say I give you as an integer 8 divided by 4. That's a fraction, Miss Hensley. Yeah, so what? Simplify it. Always, 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 always. Simplify your fractions. Okay, you're grown-ups now. Grown-up math students. And that results in 2. So ultimately, yeah, first glance, it doesn't look like it's a fraction. I mean, it looks like it's a fraction, so it's rational. But when you simplify it completely, it's really just a plain old integer. Old 2. Um, and 0. 0 is also an integer. It's on the number line. Whole numbers. Speaking of 0, whole makes a whole. So it uh, starts at 0. Okay, so starts at zero okay and there's also a review of that up here as well so any number after that so it includes uh just everything that's in the positive direction of my integers okay so it starts at zero uh you could say 90 1 million thousand i'll just put million okay anything starting at zero that is not a decimal okay so it will fit on the number line. They also will try to disguise, or I will, I will try to disguise these as well. 20 over 4 is really 5. Okay, so yes, that counts. 20 over 4 counts as a whole number. Yes, it does. And whole numbers are indicated by a capital W. Natural numbers, N, they start at the natural number any child would start counting at would be 1, yes. So starting at 1, so 10, 47, radical of 9. No, a kid wouldn't say radical of 9, but you have to simplify it. It's a perfect square, radical of 9 equals 3, so yes, 3 is a natural number. Or radical 9 is a natural number. All right, uh, 34 over 2. That simplifies to a positive whole number, so that's also natural. All right, you may remember this. So like I was saying, uh, this is a Venn diagram, and this is the real number system. We can organize them by placing them in this. So the one that is way different from all the others is actually irrational. There is no subset of irrational numbers. In other words, all of these numbers are only contained in irrational numbers. These numbers would not fit in any of these other categories. Now, when you see this, the innermost circle is the one that fits and include, is included in all the ones above it. So which one of these is included in all the others? Natural is correct. Natural, so you'd start inside, then you work your way up. Um, naturals are included in whole numbers. Whole numbers just have zero in it with it. Whole numbers are also included with integers, and then all integers. Oh, I put the wrong letter. That's a Z. My bad. Oh, come on, Grace and Mario. Hello, 
going to be a Z, and then this is a Q. So all of these three, all three of these subsets are types of rational numbers. Okay. So you can, as you're going to see in these examples coming up, um, we can put multiple labels for numbers. Okay. All right. Let's start with we're going to do a couple together, and then I'll give you a chance to try the rest. Uh, negative 10. So negative 10, not positive, not positive, because these only contain positives. So not there. Z, integers, numbers on a number line. Yes. So we can start with Z. And then it's going to be anything above that. Q, Z is contained in Q. And Q is contained in R. So it's real, it's rational, and it's an integer. Okay. So multiple answers are possible. Okay. All right, radical of 30. So if you're not sure, if you're like, oh, I can't remember, radical of 30 is 5.47722 That has no pattern to it. So no pattern means it's crazy, and so it is irrational. So 30 is definitely irrational. And if it's irrational, it's also real. There you go. 1 and 7 ninths. Fractions, giving it away. I can't simplify in 7 ninths, so I have to start in rational, which is Q. And then if it's in Q, it's also a real number, R. All right, so hopefully you get the hang of it. Go ahead and pause the video, and then when I pop back in, when you're ready, press play, and you will see the rest of the answers to these. So try these on your own. Pause the video. Hey, hey, so here we go. In purple, you can check your answers. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. All right, so I'm going to scroll down and take us to the back of this page. So here are some properties. These are review. I'm going to go through these really quickly because this is not a major thing. Uh, for, that you need to use in Algebra 2, okay? But it is good to summarize real quick. So, uh, commutative is order, change order, C-O, change order. So, A plus B equals B plus A. Uh, also with multiplication, A times B equals B times A. Associative property is your groupings. So, parentheses, A plus B, and then outside the parentheses add C is the same thing as A plus parentheses B plus C. Multiplication, same way, A times B times C is equal to A times B times C, where I put the grouping in the first two or the last two, it doesn't matter, it's the same. Identity, so if you're identity, you keep your own personality, your traits, you stay the same, okay? you're confident, right? So if you're confident in yourself when you add, you want a result in yourself. So if I add, what would I add to keep it itself? Zero. And then identity is also works with multiplication. If I want to take A and get A, I would multiply by one. All right, inverse. That's like your opposite, okay? That's usually what uh, that means in math. So A will equal, and what I want, what's the opposite of A is z negative A. I almost said zero. Uh, negative A. <laughs> so you add, so since we're still under addition, you add the opposite of itself, and that results in zero. That's what I was trying to say. All right, and then if you want to multiply the opposite of A times its inverse is it's reciprocal, 1 over A, and that will equal, well, this is A over 1, A would be on top, A would be on the bottom, A divided by A is 1. All right, then of course, good old distributive property, A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. All righty. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. I'm just going to leave you to go ahead and try these. Um, I think you'll be all right. Go ahead and you can try 13 through 24. 
We'll just go right there. 13 through 24. Go ahead and try and pause the video. Boom! There's your answers. All right. 13 is associative of multiplication. 14 is distributive. 15 is inverse of addition. 16 is commutative of addition. 17 is associative of addition. You didn't try to abbreviate associative, did you? Yeah, I've done that before when I was in seventh grade. Um, 18 <laughs> is inverse of multiplication. 19 is distributive. And 20 was identity of addition. By the way, yes, I did get called out when I was in seventh grade and I abbreviated associative with the first three letters. My teacher called me out in front of the whole class, so I never, ever, ever abbreviate associative on purpose and spell, you know, that way, that way. So, yeah, don't do it. <laughs> I'll call you out and embarrass you. Oh, all right. Um, and then the inverses, uh, so the opposite of negative 8 is positive 8, multiplication. I just flip it, put it in the denominator, negative 1 eighth, uh, 2 thirds is negative 2 thirds and 3 halves. 23 is negative 6w and 1 over 6w, and 24, negative radical 10, and 1 over radical 10. All right, closure property. Let's see if I can get some highlighter going on here. So this is important to know. Um, we don't go over it a ton in Algebra 2. However, it is an upper-level math questions, um, so I do want to cover it real quick. Um, Closure property. A set is considered closed, or a set is basically your group of numbers. Whatever the numbers you have is considered to be closed under an operation if the operation always produces an element of the same set. So it has to be, come from the same set. So if you do something to natural numbers, whatever operation is asked of you, and then is the result always another natural number? That's an example. If an element outside the set is produced, then the operation is not closed. Okay, all right, so true or false. So close, kind of think of it like this, is I'm keeping everybody where they're supposed to be. Like I'm keeping you, like a, like your pet, inside your cage, inside their cage, like the gerbil or hamster or whatever is not supposed to get out of the cage. He has to stay there. He's safe when he's in there, okay? But if something happens to him where he gets out, he is not safe. So let's go ahead and apply this back to math. We're going to answer true or false, and then if false, we're going to give a counterexample. So integers, so that's my group of number lines, right? So that's my negatives, so positives, whoops, that's supposed to be two. All right, are they closed under multiplication? So in other words, if I can think of any integers, will they always multiply to get more integers? What do you think? Well, an integer times an integer. So what's outside of integer? Decimal, fraction, right? So can I multiply any integer, and like a negative number times a positive number, and can I get a decimal or a fraction or a decimal that never stops and is crazy? No. I always get integers. Yeah, and any integer times any other integer that you can think of is always going to give you another integer. You can't just somehow get decimals from whole numbers. You can't do that. So this one is true. All right, so that's the idea. Let's try another one. Irrational numbers, so irrational, that's your crazy numbers like pi and your radicals of six, something like that, are closed, so they, as, they will stay irrational as long as you subtract them. Hmm. So if I take this minus this, pi minus radical 6. Do I get another irrational number? Yeah, you would. You get another irrational number. Okay, yes, yes. So it seems like it is, but, well, we can always subtract what? We can always subtract itself, can't we? What happens when we subtract pi? Oops, I did not mean to do that. What happens when we subtract, subtract pi from itself? <sighs> Yeah, we do not get an irrational number, we get zero, so this is actually false. All right, hopefully now, maybe you get the idea, why don't you try the next two uh, and pause the video, and then when you're ready to see the solutions, press play. All right, here's your solutions, 27 is false, 
Uh, that one should have been really easy. Whole numbers, pick a whole number, 2 divided by 3, that's just my example, and you get 0.6 repeating, making irrational number. Irrational number is not a whole number, so that's why that's false. Okay, you, you can think, you can come up with a, an example that shows that the result's not whole. All right, odd numbers. So pick odd numbers that would be closed under addition. I had 3 plus 5. I've added them, and they're odd. So when I add them, I get an even number. So since I got an even answer that is not odd, that's why it's false. Okay. So as long as you can think of an example that disproves, it's kind of like in geometry, that's what your counterexample does, it dis disproves the statement. Okay. All right, so that's it for section one. Woohoo! Great job.